Alright, and here we go. We've got all the AK parts. Well, not all of them, but a good bit of them in the ultrasonic cleaner. Uh, this water you could see the bottom of the tank prior to putting these parts in. Uh, in the ones that are sticking out, once they've been in for a little while, we'll flip them, scrub them a little bit, and uh, it's always a good idea, like I say, since we're wor working with limited resources here, uh, once I pull everything out, if there's any kind of residue or film, it never hurts to go ahead and change your water and solvent out and uh, run it again just on some of the more key parts. Uh, again, as I've shown in some of the other videos, this happens to be the solution that I'm running right now. Uh, this is the steel and gun parts solution. They have a brass solution for your for reloading. Uh, seems to work real well. I've not tried the Hornady or any of the other brands. Uh, we'll see how this does and then try something else out. And eventually I am going to be upgrading to a commercial ultrasonic unit. Uh, this one is a cheapie. Seems to work just fine. But uh, I just need more volume. And we're back with the AK-47, the Romanian. Everything has been frog looped now, cleaned. I've got everything laid out here. And we are now ready to reassemble. So we're going to start by putting the buttstock on. And uh, whoever initially installed this actually ended up using a pair of sheetrock screws to attach this. Um, I really don't see a better way. I mean, it, it, it unless you were to put through bolts, I, I think that works just fine. Uh, maybe some of you all have a better idea or disagree. Please put it in the comments. Let me know uh, if you've got a, you know, suggestions or anything. I welcome them. Always welcome suggestions. Get our barrel stuck in there. All right. Get everything fit in together like a jigsaw puzzle. That's part of the beauty of this vise here. I drew a blank. Part of the beauty of this vise here is that it gives you so much flexibility or just what you're going to use, how you need to hold stuff, uh, you know, just pretty much the sky's the limit. You don't have to worry about. I'll tell you what I do have to worry about. My tool's missing. There we go. I guess I should have got my poop in a group before I started this video. Oh well, story of my life. And with anything, whenever you go to start your screws in, as any type of machine stuff, you do not tighten them as tight as they go, as you go. You will start all of your screws, bolts, nuts, whatever it is that you're doing, you get them all started, and then you go through and systematically tighten them. Say head bolts on an engine, uh, they have a particular pattern, so you squeeze the head gasket properly. Stuff like this, if you tighten one of them before you get the other one started, you may not be able to get the next ones started. So it's just a good idea to snug stuff a little bit, just get it started, and then get the rest of them and go back. Uh, It'll help you avoid cross-threading, all kinds of problems, having to take things back apart, just helps. And with these, these screws are going into polymer, so they don't have to be real tight. Alright, now we've got a good hole 
for our setup here. And then our next thing is going to be our hand grip. Get out my parts from a hand grip here. And there is a <clears throat> square down here in the receiver. This is actually, if you were to get a Sega and need to do the conversion, back here in the back is actually where the trigger group is moved to on those. But for our purposes here, we are doing the way, that, I mean, this is actually an AK-47, and so this is where your hand grip goes. And I found that it's usually easier to drop everything on the floor and then get started. <laughs> no, it's usually easier. <clears throat> Take your hand guard, and of course, first and foremost, make sure you got everything the way it needs to be. And I found that if you take the handguard and get your bolt down in it first, get it down in there, get everything with the bolt the way that it needs to be. There we go. And you should just be able to get that to drop straight down in there. All right, and it's usually a good idea. Get your screw down in there, get all, everything set up. I don't know if you guys can see in there. There's a flathead. I don't know why anyone would use a flathead on this. But they would. Get your piece there, your nut, in essence, that's what it is. Get it down in there and get everything started. And this just again goes to show some of the versatility of this little lineman holder here. You do not have to use it the way that they expect you to. It does not have to be used with everything clamped. It just is nice to have around. You can set things on it. You will be amazed at all the different ways you find to use this. Alright, now we're going to loosen it just a hair. Get everything lined up. Yes, I'm going to eyeball this. After all, it is a Kalashnikov. He eyeballed the design, right? Now this is metal to metal, so you're not going to have to worry as much about stripping this out, although you could, I guess, if you just threw the mojo to it. Of course, this being a Tapco handle, it's got your little storage compartment there. All right, and now tighten everything up and we're ready to worry about our trigger group, our forearm, etc., etc. All right, guys. Well, first of all, I owe you an apology. Uh, I went ahead and did the hammer and trigger group install off camera. Uh, some things have changed with this particular gun and I need to go ahead and get it done and uh, I will bring this gun back in and I will show the trigger removal and reinstall the entire package uh, maybe when I do an upgrade or something like that maybe I'll put in some Tapco stuff or something like that for you to take a look at uh, but I wanted you to see this and I had also spoken about the shepherd's hook 
Well, it appears that the shepherd's hook on this one will only really go the way that it was. It doesn't show to be correct per any of the diagrams that I have or have ever seen, but it was not long enough to go any of the other ways. Oop, there goes that shoddy camera work. There we go. We'll zoom out here. Just wanted you all to see that. It is in there properly now. Everything does work. And we're going to now move on to fitting in the safety. Uh, and then we will end up doing the gas tube, forearm, all that good mess. Safety's a fairly easy affair. Want to rock your trigger forward? That safety will go all the way in there. You'll fit it into the hole across the receiver from it. Get your disconnector out of the way, and then you'll just rotate it down. Again. Wouldn't you know it would be a booger? We'll go the other way. Do as I say, not as I do. Again, being that this is an AK, we can get away with stuff like that. Who knows, maybe some of you armors may tell me that that is the proper way. All right. Safety is functioning properly. Everything checks out. All right, 